Welcome to the R video tutorial on Quad Mod Part 7. Here we're going to look at correlations and covariances of our portfolio that we've generated. If you haven't looked at Part 6 yet, you might want to go back and do that because we're going to pick up with the code right where we left off there and we don't have enough time to run it again. Uh, I have a fresh instance of R running, so I'm going to run through all the code that we did before. So if you go back to 6 and you come back here, you'll be able to follow right along. So I'm going to load the library, Quant Mod. And I'm getting my warning like I normally do. You should be used to this by now. I have my ticker symbols here, Apple, Google, Target, Amazon, and Toyota Motors. So these are the stocks that I'm interested in. And this is going, this code here puts it all together and gives me a single data frame or data set that has all of my information in it, all the information that I want for my portfolio. Now if I come over here, my answer comes out in portfolio three. If I look at portfolio three, you can see that I have Apple, Google, Target, Amazon, and Toyota Motors. And these are the weekly returns. If you notice, the dates go off here by seven days each. So we're interested in the weekly returns. We've got the weekly returns here. Now what we wanna do is look at how these are correlated with each other. Because the next video, what we want to do is try to optimize portfolios using another package in R. Uh, and when we put those together, it will show you the weightings uh, that you would use if you're using this optimal portfolio theory that has been developed and is coded already. It'll be interesting to look at. Uh, I'm not a financial planner, so I'm not telling you to use it. I'm just showing you there are all kinds of tools available in R, and that's what I'm trying to relate. Okay, so now that we have portfolio three, we can look at various quantities from it. So the apply function will be really, really useful today. So I'm gonna look at portfolio three, and I'm going to look at the mean, and I wanna put this down axis two, which means go down the columns, go down the columns and give me the mean for each column. And if I just run this by itself, you can quickly see that I get this, these are the average returns, weekly returns, and you can see some are more than others. Uh, notice that Apple is pretty good, but look at Amazon. Amazon's really good, and Toyota Motors is kind of slow, uh, but this could be what would be expected. I'm going to copy and paste this because, well, I don't really need to copy and paste. Yeah, I'll copy and paste it. What I want to look at is not just the mean, but maybe the median. Some of us like to look at more than just the mean because the mean, if you're familiar with statistics, is the first moment. So if I look at the median here, notice that Toyota is negative. So maybe it isn't as good as I thought it was. Uh, Amazon's not nearly as high as it was. And if you look at these, most of them are less than the others, except for Apple and Google. It's actually more. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at these, they may or may not be the same because of skewness in the distributions, which comes to the next thing. So we could look at the covariance in the portfolio three, which is related to the risk. Uh, it's not exactly the risk. Uh, we'll talk about how to get that here in a second. There's a risk associated with it. Uh, this is the correlation matrix or the covariance matrix, and you can see how they're related to each other. And if you notice, all the values in here are positive. So the, when one goes up, the other ones tend to be going in the same direction. However, they're, these are covariances, so we can't really tell the strength. So what we want to do is we want to go back and we want to get the correlation. So we can do that pretty easily as well. Uh, using the correlation function, and when I run this, uh, I get uh, a very similar picture, but it gives me sort of the, the strength on how high they're correlated. Notice that Google and Apple have a correlation coefficient of 0.15, which is about a half, which is pretty good, but Google and Amazon has uh, 0.61, which is getting kind of high. So a lot of these things move together, and we would kind of expect them to move together, right? They're tech stocks. And things are sort of correlated with uh, Toyota Motors, but not really. 
but this gives us a way to look at things. Now, when we put a portfolio together, we're going to have what are called weights in the portfolio or what you might want to call allocations. We've allocated this percentage of our money to each one of these stocks, and th that has to add up to one in order to do this. And if we do this, we can get a weighted mean of the returns, a weighted correlation or covariance, uh, and the weighted covariance, you have to set up a little bit different because it's not an actual covariance, it's an actual weighted variance of our weighted mean. We've created a new random variable which will be weighted. So let's first put in here the weights. And remember, these weights will have to add up to one. So keep that in mind. So I'm just going to say, what if we just did like, well, maybe it's 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.1, uh, point. Zero point. See, let's see. I need five of these. Another zero point two five, and then I have to come up with the last one. And so, what I might want to do to, to come up with the last one is just run weights one because I, I want to make sure that I'm accurate here, and then just do sum one minus the sum. If I can hit the minus key, the sum of weights one. And notice it's 0 0.15. Now, you could have did that in your head, which is fine, but I always like to check things, especially when things need to add up to a specific value. So 0 0.15. Here we have it. Now we know this will add up to 1. We can verify that it adds up to exactly 1 by doing some weights 1. Okay, and it does, it adds up to one. Now, if I want to get the weighted mean, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back up here to my apply function. I'm going to get the mean and I will apply this to the mean here. So I'm gonna have this unweighted mean. Uh, so this is gonna give me the unweighted means here. And all this would do is just take the average of those. But a weighted mean will actually take what we have here as our weights Let's see here, let's do the unweighted mean. And then we're going to do matrix multiplication here. Against our weights, if I don't have them capitalized. And I can spell it right. Weights, one. Okay, this will do a sum across them. It multiplies each one together, and it does a sum across them, and then we can look at what this actually outputs, and it'll be a single number, okay? So when I look at weighted mean one here, I can even look over here, and I can see it's 0 0.00434. It's a single value. This is the weighted performance of my portfolio. This is my expected return under these weights. Uh, if I want to get the risk associated with it, I have to do what's called a quadratic form on this, which is actually not very hard to do, but we have to use the covariance again, which I'm going to do. Uh, and so here, I'm just going to do my weighted, and a lot of people call this risk. And it's going to be a single number as well. So I'm going to do my weights, but I'm going to transpose them. Uh, if I can spell it again, so weights one. I'm going to do my matrix multiplication. And if you're not familiar with portfolio theory, I would highly suggest you go and become uh, familiar with it before you uh, jump into doing any of this. Uh, because there's a lot of matrix algebra that you can do and matrix representation with these uh, that you can do. And then I'm going to do here again matrix multiplication. and wait for my tooltip to pop up because I really don't feel like typing all of it. And I can get a weighted risk. So this is gonna be my weighted variance uh, of my portfolio here. And it says non-conformable arguments. So somewhere along the way here, something didn't work right. In general, it's supposed to be X transpose, your variance covariance matrix uh, times X. So what's not matching? So I can do this real quick, just run the back half, see if that produces anything. And it says that's not conformable. Let's see if the first one is conformable. If I go in this direction, maybe I can just stick the transpose on the other end. Right, so we're gonna take it off this end. And this is something, these are quirks in R that you have to get used to. And you have to know if I'm transposing matrices, 
uh, I need to make sure that they transpose in the correct way in order to give me the answer that I'm looking for. Uh, this one says it's non-conformable as well, which is, uh, oh wait, because I'm using Portfolio 1, because I'm a moron uh, sometimes. All right, so now let's go back to our transpose. So just keep this in mind that you can make all kinds of little mistakes, and I purposely try to make these mistakes on here because a lot of times people really feel like, oh my gosh, uh, only experts can do this, and you know I'm, I'm stupid because I can't do it or whatever. Experts make mistakes as well. I actually tell all of my students, never code in front of anybody. Because if you code in front of somebody, they'll see how big of an idiot you are. Uh, not saying that they're really idiots, but people lose confidence in you very quickly if you make mistakes. All right, so now I have this weighted risk, which is what most people, I call it, it's a weighted variance. Uh, because I've created a new random variable, which is a weight of these uh, returns. So this is my weighted risk that I can see here uh, under this portfolio. This is the risk associated with it. Now, if I change my portfolio, you will see these numbers change. So let's change this real quick. I'm going to put this at 1.5. Put a little more of that one and a little less of this one. Because rem remember, they have to add up to 1. And you'll notice that this number here is going to change. So we can watch it when it runs. That number will change. And it blew up at me, right? No, it didn't. Amazing. Uh, and it did change. It was 434, now it's 435. And we can see what happens with the weighted risk. And the reason I'm going over this is for portfolio theory, this often becomes uh, important. And now we have 0.00481. Didn't change that much. So what we have in place here is we have ourselves set up in order to be able to create these portfolios and understand that each portfolio has a weight. Each stock has a weight associated with it with the percentage of the portfolio that we need to have. And what we're going to do in the next video is see if we can't optimize that. Find what's the best portfolio weights that will give me the controlled risk that I want to control. All right, so see you in the next video.